Hello, everybody. So first of all, uh, I'm really sorry I can't show what I'm actually working on Crash Bandicoot on the run. Uh, so I will be happy once we release the game to come back and to show you uh, all of the artwork I did for that game. And second of all, I uh, apologize if uh, sometime my English is a bit broken or if I have some blank during the presentation. Uh, I have ADHD and it can happen that I freeze uh, because I'm starting to figure out, to figure out what I want to say. Uh, so now I'm going to start to share my screen. Alors, so from playing game to making game. So hi everyone. Oh, okay. Hi everyone, I am Aurelia um, and I'm 30 years old. I'm from the 90s. I'm French. Uh, I'm born in Bordeaux, then I moved to Poitiers and sometime to Nice. And I studied to Paris. I love red wine and uh, any kind of food. <laughs> so right now I'm working at King since five years in Stockholm. And I am a character designer for Crash Bandicoot on the Run. And that's really fun. <laughs> and also really hard. <laughs> That's why I'm really tired, uh, because we will release the game in March, and uh, we work hard right now. <laughs> uh, and outside my work uh, in video game, I also uh, make some illustration, uh, and I want to give a sense of magic and nostalgia on my personal artwork. Um, so you are what you like, or you like what you are. So my mother was an artist <laughs> and uh, she meets a man while she was pregnant that become my adopting dad and there I am. So both of them, they stopped their art career to take care of me while I was starting my own art career. <laughs> um, so as you can see, I was really deep into like a, alien and uh, UFO, shark, dinosaur. I didn't put everything, but I just take a mini selection. I was also, my parents also um, encouraged me to, to express myself with art. So like from three years old, you can see I use a lot of different techniques. I could even draw on the wall of my bedroom. It was absolutely fine. Uh, I was a really lonely kid. Uh, I was really introvert. I, I, I have a big social anxiety and problem to communicate with other children. But with my best friend, which are our common interest, that was video games. So every weekend we play a lot, like a lot. I get from him the first nest with all of the game, uh, like Zilda or um, Fester. And then after he gets a PlayStation 1 before every other kid, so we play a lot, like a lot. <laughs> and all of this uh, is what uh, bring me where I am now. Um, so don't neglect all of your uh, childhood interests, actually. <laughs> so why do I choose art and not something else? At the beginning, I wanted to become a paleontologist and research dinosaurs uh, and discover the biggest T-Rex in the whole world. Um, but unfortunately, I was really bad at school. Uh, uh, I was really bad uh, from middle school because it was like a jungle, too many kids. I get a lot of panic attack. Um, I wasn't feeling fitting on the box. Uh, I lose time to, I was focusing on surviving more than studying. So I wasn't any interest to all of the class and lesson except art, of course. Uh, so I come from my dream to become a paleontologist. That's completely, that was completely broken to drawing dinosaur <laughs> instead. Um, the only thing I, I could keep doing without suffering. <laughs> uh, and actually I discovered that drawing was my way to communicate. Um, 
I was, I was not focusing too much on the technical skill, but I was more focusing on uh, how to um, give a sense to my feeling and to uh, my need and what I want to share with people and create connection with them. So I use a lot of comics book for that because it's mixed world and image. Uh, I also, so this is from like 12 years old and I win my first prize of a comics uh, challenge. And from this, I get recognition from a teacher and from students. So I just keep going. I never stop from that. Um, then after that, I, I knew I wanted, I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know what type of artist. So after middle school, I start to explore different options. So comics book, uh, I go to study movie um, to understand people because I wanted to make like video about human being. Then I study apply art to learn the rules what's a design, how to make a design, and understand objects around the world. Uh, then after this, I go back to plastic art to, because I needed some freedom. It was too much rules on applied art, so I needed to express a bit more what I want to say. And then I go to fashion. <laughs> Um, again, because I, I believe that costume are a traduction, a translation of who you are. And after that, I go back to animation movie. <laughs> and this was mind blowing for me. It was like, I, I can do everything I want. I can, I can draw everything. I can say everything. And my classmate is fantastic. Uh, we are finally on the same level and we understand each other. So I stayed to this uh, school during three years, but we were also uh, two class. The other one was video game. So I had a lot of friends in video game too. And sometimes I sneak out to their class to, to learn a bit what they're learning. And uh, because I couldn't make a choice, <laughs> I love both. Um, so that's. Uh, that's uh, my school way, and I get my graduation, and voila. <laughs> so build your, your career and don't give up. I think this is my main advice is to not give up, never. If you have a dream, just go for it. And don't listen what people say to you because they have no clue. They don't know what will happen in the future. You only know. Um, so after I get uh, graduate, you have to, um, oops, I get this job. You have to do an internship and I wanted, my goal was that I wanted to become character designer. No matter where, um, I just wanted to be that. So I look at a lot of uh, job offer and they didn't have character designers. So I always say no, no, no. I don't want to be like generalistic. I don't want to be environment artist. I don't want to be 3D artist because I'm from also 3D. Um, I really wanted to be character designer. So I get, I wasn't with an internship during several months and um, I didn't find anything in France. So time run fast and I need this internship to validate my, um, my, my school. So I start to explore in Europe some offer and I found one in Manchester, uh, an internship about character design and uh, visual development. So I take it and then I go to Manchester and I didn't speak one word in English at all. I absolutely don't speak English. I have a little notebook with write, hi, my name is uh, I want, where is, it was <laughs> really fun and really scary. Uh, and uh, I remember the first day I meet my boss in the company in Manchester. 
uh, I use Google Translation to talk with him. <laughs> um, so voila, after this, I moved to Belfast and after I moved to Stockholm. So I, I never work in France and I never work in my native language. Sometimes it's difficult. Um, but this is just for say that uh, it's okay to leave your comfort zone and uh, don't be afraid. Uh, so when I end, um, how do I end at King? After, my, uh, after working in animation movie, I was a bit tired and I wanted something new and a new experience. So video game was a good opportunity. And I send my uh, port my send my candidate my candidature to King by internet, and I receive a no, no way you are you don't fit for what we want. But I don't give up. I send my portfolio by post mail, and uh, they call me. <laughs> so if one way is not working, try another way. And if those are always not working, try another way. <laughs> because it will always pay off. And even if it don't, you will get probably some feedback to understand why, why or where you can improve for um, being employed for the next time. <sighs> so I moved to Stockholm. I start with Candy Crush Jelly. I work with Illustrator. I have no clue about to use Illustrator. I have no clue about being a game artist. Uh, it was a big company with a big open space. Uh, for someone that has social anxiety, it was a big challenge. Um, everybody speaks perfect English and I was like struggling a lot. So I start to get some English lesson. Uh, I watch Netflix in English with subtitle in English. I try to read in English. Um, but even if I struggle with this, um, my coworkers were really happy about myself because I always deliver a, a good work and I always understand what is the request. I always deliver in time. So that was uh, that's the most important, uh, and also that you are a friendly coworker and that you get along with people. It's really really important. I was a bit laughing about everything, and sometimes they say joke I didn't understand, but everybody laughs. So I say, ha ha ha, that's funny. Then <laughs> uh, after Candy Crush Jelly, I work for Candy Crush Friends, uh, make some. Uh, some concepts, uh, uh, because we were looking on how the game will look. Uh, we they didn't have a clear idea, so I was there to help them to get a clear idea. Um, and then after this, I I work uh, in several projects. So I was a narrative uh, illust. Um, how do you say? I was an artist for. Uh, the narrative guide for Candy Crush. So I was working with someone that explained um, that right story and uh, I was making image to illustrate the story. Uh, and I also worked for some game that never came on the market. So I just show a mini peeks here, but normally I shouldn't. Um, and after all of this, I work on Crash Bandicoot. And it's for me, it's like my milestone <laughs> because I work on a game. I'm a fan since I'm a kid. <laughs> and I never, when I look at myself now, uh, up of my 40 years old, and I look at my mini myself when I was like 10 years old, I wouldn't believe that I will work on the game I'm actually playing. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I feel very lucky. <laughs> um, I make this little uh, timeline because I think it's really important to look at the past on your career. So this is in 2014 when I just be graduate and I didn't speak one word of English and I just jump on the, the void. <laughs> 
Uh, and I start with an internship as a character designer in, um, in Manchester, in a country I know nothing, no one. <laughs> and just because I wanted to do character design and I evolved like this. So character designer junior in Belfast and then game artist junior in King in Stockholm. And then I do after environment artist in Stockholm and narrative artist in Stockholm and visual artist in Stockholm. And now I am again a character designer. <laughs> um, and I'm looking for what's next. <laughs> um, one of the main advice I will give to um, everyone is to stay hungry. Um, because when you are a student, you are on a universe that everybody find you have teacher that is feeding you they're feeding you every day they give you knowledge they they teach you new thing you explore you have you are with other uh, schoolmates so you collaborate and you learn from each other and it's like a, the biggest creative bubble you can be and when you start working you don't have this anymore <laughs> So you will have to go to the museum by yourself. You will have to, to go travel yourself. And when I mean travel, I don't mean going to a new country. It can be in your own country, but visit the next village or the next city or even go back to your hometown and explore with new eyes and make a collection and draw what you see and what makes you happy. This will be your, your fuel. It will be your energy. And same for your colleague, like, uh, uh, it's not the same, like, um, you will not get, if you are lucky, you maybe will get the same relationship that you are with your schoolmates, but uh, I personally don't. Uh, my schoolmates from my art school are still my friends, and they are my best friends, and I will never find this energy with people in my work now. I, 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 if I'm lucky, but unfortunately, they all leave my company. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, stay hungry, stay curious, stay humble, and um, everything will be fine. <laughs> um, so now I will talk, talk uh, my last chapter about my character design and my process. Oh, I, I think I, I talk really quick. It's only 27 minutes. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. Uh, so my character design process, I wanted to show you uh, one of the work I did for Crash really much, really, really much. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, so I will, I will keep talking about the process I use now, but I pick all the art that I did in the past. So they are, um, they are not like as fun. Anyway, uh, so first of all, I start by planning. Uh, that's key. For me, planning is key. So uh, when I mean planning, it's not just having a to-do list, is set your deadline. Deadline are important. I repeat it. It's really important. If you don't have deadline, you will procrastinate forever. So, and keep your deadline. Even if you are not, fin if, even if you are not done in the way you want to be done, uh, it's fine if it's not perfect. Just make it and go to the next project. Uh, so I use my bullet journal. I have two bullet journals. I have one for my personal work and I have one for um, King, for my... Uh, job. Uh, so this the one I show is the one uh, from my personal, uh, personal work. Uh, and actually, this is what makes me keep project like, because of my bullet journal, I always deliver my work in time uh, for my company. And everybody is happy to work with me because of that reason. Um, I also create a certain type of um, work uh, setting that is easy to follow. And for my manager, it's super, uh, super uh, beneficial because he don't have to worry at all. He know that these days for that task. Uh, and regarding my personal artwork, then because of this, I 
create my mini shop, I create my YouTube channel, I create uh, I create a certain type of amount of illustration per month. Uh, um, all of this. The only thing is that don't make pressure on yourself. <laughs> if if you don't make it, it's fine. It's okay because sometimes you have shit day. Sometimes you have uh, something happen and it wasn't planned. So accept it and um, focus on yourself. The work can wait sometime. Uh, second, I always write down when I get a new character, uh, like for example, hey, you're gonna draw a tiny tiger for Crash Bandicoot. This I can show you because it's not the pictures. Um, then I will start writing down. So I create a psychologic portrait of my character. I'm trying to figure out how he think, how he behave, who he is, what is his mindset. Sometimes he's a total jerk. So I have to show him on his face that he looked like that. And sometimes he's like bold and really adventurous. So I'm gonna do also my best to translate this. And um, my story idea are always great in my head, but when once I make them on paper, they become not as good as I wanted. So this is something I just want to say. It's fine. <laughs> don't don't say to yourself that you suck because you don't suck. You just try to figure out thing, and you are looking for it. So uh, third point. Mood board or reference board or um, influence board, or I don't know how you want to call it. So this is the board that I'm going to use why, once I receive the name of my character, once I create a description for him, once I also put a deadline for when I give, uh, I deliver him, I create a mood board. So I will be looking at everything I found uh, that inspire me. I can look at fashion, I can look at nature, I can look at thing, weather. Uh, I can also sometimes look at art, like for, uh, for Crash, Crash Bandicoot, I'm looking a lot into uh, uh, Looney Tunes and Cartoon Network, uh, the pop culture from the 90s, uh, some commercial also, some typography, uh, some color, so all of this will help you uh, to build something in your mind. So it's like create a, a collection of visual. You can also collect sound if you prefer sound or uh, video or um, uh, material, touching. So it depends how you think. It's really important that you adapt your way of working in the way how you think. This is mine. But yours probably will be different. Um, fourth step, I do some sketches. So I compare sketches uh, like, uh, how do you say, throw up what I have in my mind um, because I'm going to look. I'm going to look, I'm going to put everything outside on the paper, and while I empty from the inside and my paper is full, I'm going to take decision. And taking decision is actually the more, one of the steps that is the more important. Because if you don't take decision yourself, nobody will, well, if you don't have a, a great uh, art director, for example, they, nobody will take a decision for yourself. So you have to do it. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, because this will uh, allow you to go to the next step. So for example, something I like to do is that um, I, in general, I, I um, limit myself to draw um, like between three and six different characters maximum. And after that, I just pick the one I think fits the best. So I will, I will not start to think too much. I just look at the character I draw and I'm just like, oh, this one make me laugh. Oh, it's, it's really funny. He has something, he tell me something, he's, he's, he communicate with me. And I'm gonna say, it's this one. 
I'm going to pick this one. I sometimes show to my colleague also. I say, what do you think? And if they laugh, if they get the same reaction, if they say, ha, 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 this one is so weird, I love him, then I would say, we take him. We, we just take him. Because it creates, that means he's a character, because it creates a reaction inside yourself. So we create a connection. And this is what character design is for. You don't want a character that is stereotypical and, and it's just like empty and pretty and don't make you feel anything and you, you don't recognize yourself. You can't use empathy with this character. This, this is just like boring. But if you make something like a bit um, uh, atypical and um, different and real, uh, then you will start to to drive your, uh, your uh, player or uh, the person that is watching, you will drive this person to a direction and you will manage this direction because you are the master of it. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> uh, and after all of this, uh, I start to create, exp so this unfortunately I can show my work. I would love, but I start to create some uh, expression board, uh, posing board, articulation, how my character uh, live, like what are his expression? Who, who, how can I translate that on his face? Uh, his posing also are really important. So sometimes I take photo of myself when I can't find the right, the right posing I, I want on internet. I dress up with uh, some clothes that I find and uh, that can match his silhouette. I take photo and then I try to um, copy the pose that I do. Um, and then articulation, it's important because you will also work with people uh, that are in animation or that do rig. And you have to explain to them how the character is uh, articulated, uh, how the joint are made, how he's moving, what he can do and why, what he can't do. So for example, uh, oh, he can uh, fold his arm like this, but he can't turn his head like that or something, something like that. That's really helpful for uh, your coworkers that are after you. Uh, it's really important to think about that uh, and not just your art bubble, but who is going to work for you, make, their, uh, make for them the work the most easy. They will thank you for that and they will love working with you for that. And probably for the next project, they will recommend you. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's nice to work with people that you get along. It's really, really, really important. Um, I recommend a book that is really good. It's Morpho. You can find it in museum in Barcelona. It's from my teacher. I get this teacher when I was at school in animation movie and uh, he's fantastic. Uh, so he teach uh, morphology on human being. But when we were at school, he teach us on animal and on monster and creature and how we can be inspired about uh, muscle and bones from what exists in life and create a new, a new morphology way. But that is still logical uh, and makes sense. So yeah, I recommend this book. They are not really expensive and they, you, you learn a lot uh, inside. Um, and then I finish my process with a call art. So I take my character, I paint it uh, with the color I want. I normally give to my character a good posing that represents who he is. And then I go on the internet and try to find some uh, texture I want uh, to help the, the 3D artist to work after. So like, oh, this is a gold, but it's like, it's, it's not a polished gold. Uh, you have some imperfection or uh, this is more like cartoon. 
uh, or this is the type of shoes I really want you to find. Um, so that's uh, that will help uh, this person to to uh, be autonomous inside his own work. And after we start a back and forward, so um, he will create the three D model and he will say, "Hey, Aurelia, look what I did. Is is it is what you have in mind?" And I will say, yes, sure. And sometimes it's not what I have in mind, but it's even better what he did. So I'm just like, we go for that. And <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's thing like that. Uh, uh, we work from home now since March. So uh, we can't go to the computer to each other. So instead we use Trello. Uh, it's really, really nice. And uh, it's uh, keep our dynamic uh, inside the team really good. So I make my art, uh, my art character packet. I put every time on Trello, like every two days, and I notify my uh, the 3D artist and I say, hey, are you okay with this? This is clear for you. Do you understand anything you want me to change? Anything you have in mind? And after everything is set, I give the packet to him, he makes the 3D art, and he told me the same, hi Aurelia, what do you think about this? Is that okay? It goes really quick. Huh? All of this is like, uh, I make a character in between one week and two weeks. And he makes the 3D between one week and two weeks, also depends. And then when all of this is set, uh, when we render the character, we give to the animation, and then same the animation is like uh, making, uh, some posing and say it is what you have in mind and um, yeah and same animation is between one week and two week and then we put on the game and uh, we put some music and you can uh, kill the boss and it's nice <laughs> uh, so voila that was <laughs> my process uh, now it's a q and a <laughs> and i hope you you enjoyed this uh, this talk, even if I was uh, really really fast. <laughs> <laughs>